Okay. Hello. Good. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Erik Bakkers, and I'm going to present to you the nano quantum photonics track within applied physics. And let me start with an introduction. So on this slide, you can see a photograph of the inside of a data center. And the point is that we are all using enormous amounts of data. So we are streaming movies. Uh, we are searching for data on the internet. Um, we store a lot of photos. And the point is that we're using enormous amounts of, of data. And the expectation is that this will only increase uh, for the coming years. Well, this is all fine, but uh, one of the challenges is that um, this information technology in general, uh, it costs a lot of energy. So on this slide, on this graph, you can see the, um, the uh, amount of energy per component in information technology over the, the years. And if we extrapolate what we're doing right now, then the expectation is that in, within the coming 10 years, we are using like 20% of the total available energy on information technology. And well, these components in information technology consist of the networks, the production of uh, ICT, the production of consumer devices and, and data centers, as you can see here. So this is a lot of energy. And I think it's clear to everybody that we should try to make these, these uh, devices uh, more efficient. So we have to reduce the energy consumption. And one way of doing this is by photonic integration. So currently all these chips are based on electronic signals. And the problem is that we suffer from the electronic resistance. And that has two consequences. First of all, uh, well, because of the resistance, we lose energy. Um, and secondly, because of this resistance, we cannot go to higher frequencies. Yeah, and if we use photons instead of electrons, we do not suffer from this resistance. Uh, and we can overcome these resistive losses. Yeah, so photonic integration is one way to reduce the energy um, in information technology. And the other uh, trend is that we're using more and more uh, computational power. And there are still some big challenges, some big problems which we cannot address today. So for instance, um, it is impossible with today's computers to calculate the full electronic structure of, well, complex molecules like DNA or proteins. Uh, another example is the climate. So we do not have enough computer power to do a full calculation uh, of the climate. Um, so also here we need alternative concepts, alternative computational concepts. And one of these concepts is a quantum computer. Now these, uh, these themes, so photonic integration and quantum computation are the main themes within this nano quantum photonics track. So if you decide to do your master within this nano quantum photonics track, then you will be involved in assessing future applications. You will work on okay, green, so energy efficient information technologies, uh, quantum computation, and there are also applications in the energy sector like solar cells. You will be involved in the discovery of new physical phenomena. You will learn about modern forefront materials, uh, crystal growth, device fabrication, and characterization. And well, needless to say, but this is also for the other tracks, uh, such a master is a perfect start of your career. So you can either start as a PhD, uh, but there are also plenty of opportunities within the industry. So in this track, we have the following courses. The first one is uh, mandatory. It is condensed matter at the nanoscale. This is an introductory course for the whole track. And then here you can see a list of the elective courses. I will not mention them all. Um, we will also distribute the slides so you can have a look yourself. You can see we have spintronics, um, magnetism. We have a lot of courses on well, semiconductors, on photonics and also on, on quantum physics and quantum technologies. And so you can select uh, a number of these courses. Then in this track, we have um, a number of research groups being involved. And on this slide, you can see all the groups which are at least more or less involved within this nano quantum photonics track. The first five are really in this track and the bottom three are also in, in other tracks. 
So let's uh, go through them. The first one is advanced nanomaterials and devices, the A and D group. That is the group where I'm in also myself. Um, the second group is physics of nanostructures, F and A. That is the group which is chaired by Bert Koopmans. Then we have molecular materials and nanosystems, M2N, uh, chaired by René Janssen. Photonics and semiconductor nanophysics, PSN, chaired by Jaime Gomez uh, Rivas. Then plasma and materials processing, PMP, uh, Aaron Kessels. Molecular biosensing, Manoprins, and coherence and quantum technology by Jom Leiter. And if you are interested in a master project in one of these groups, then please contact one of these people and well, they will bring you into contact with, uh, for instance, PhD uh, students. So now on the coming slides, I will go, I will discuss uh, the first five groups in a bit more detail, give some examples of master projects, and, um, and then I have some concluding uh, remarks. Yeah, so the first group is, is our group, uh, A&D. Uh, in our group, uh, we are working on nanomaterials, more specifically on nanowires. Um, so we have uh, these people in our group as, as staff members. So it's, it's me, it's Jos Havekort and Marcel Verheijer. And in our group, we have three main projects. The first one is what we call hexagonal silicon germanium. The, um, the big goal here is to get light emission from silicon germanium uh, by changing the crystal structure. And recently we have uh, succeeded in this. This has been in the news a few weeks ago. And the big goal here is to demonstrate lasing. And this refers, of course, to uh, photonic integration. Then the second project is about solar cells. So we believe that by using the geometry of the wires that we can uh, make more efficient solar cells and even break fundamental limits. And the third project um, has to do with quantum computation. So we are making these wires, but also complete devices in order to find Majorana states. And in the end, we would like to make qubits based on these, these Majoranas. Um, next week, 15th of January, we are organizing a master event in our group um, at two o'clock. And I will send around some more information uh, later on. Here we will discuss all the available master projects uh, in our group. Then the second group is F and A. Uh, here we have Bert Koopmans, Henk Zwachte, Reinhard Lofreise and Rembert Duine. In this group they focus on the magnetic properties of new materials. Um, in that group they have um, a very advanced ultra high vacuum system in which they can grow and well, deposit um, magnetic materials but also non-magnetic materials. Um, and one example is here given on the, well, on the left, in the left picture. Um, so in this machine, they can make stacks of materials. Uh, some of them are magnetic, some are non-magnetic, and they look to, let's say, these magnetic exchange interactions between these materials. Um, in the right picture, you can see um, schematically, let's say, a magnetic uh, memory element. Um, so in this group, they also study the interaction between light and um, magnetic states. And this refers, of course, to uh, reduce the energy consumption. So it's, it's low energy uh, memories. Then the third group is molecular materials and nanosystems, M2N, where we have, well, um, many, many people. This group is uh, partly, partly shared also with uh, chemistry. So we have René Janssen, Rijn de Koerhoorn, Kees Flipsen, Peter Bobert, um, and then Stefan Miskers and Martijn Wink. The last two are uh, within chemistry. And there's a part-time professor, Heron Geling. He's also at the Hall Center. So in this group, they focus mainly on organic materials, where they look to the interaction with light. And there are two classes. So when, uh, one where we convert, let's say, light into electricity. This is, for instance, in a solar cell. So light can be absorbed and um, be transferred in useful electricity. But you can also think about the opposite process, where um, a current is injected and then convert it into light, and this is then a light emitting diode. So in this group, they work on the development of new materials. They do optical spectroscopy. They use scanning probe techniques to study these materials. They make devices, and there is a strong theory component in this group. Um, 
we then have the group uh, PSN Photonics and Semiconductor Nanophysics. Uh, so Alberta Couto, Andrea Fiore, Jaime Gomez Rivas, Paul Koenraad and André Silov. Uh, in this group they focus on semiconductors and the interaction with light. In this example here on the bottom left, you can see a photonic crystal. So where we have holes, let's say, uh, with the periodicity of the wavelength of light. And by tuning the dimensions and this periodicity, they can tune the interaction with light and they can even confine light. Actually, they, they can capture light in such a cavity. And by tuning the properties of the cavity, they can, for instance, manipulate the, the lifetime of the emitted uh, light. Then in this uh, top right image, you can see a scanning tunneling microscopy image where they have imaged a quantum dot. So this triangular shape here is a quantum dot. This is a high resolution image, so you can even see the, the atoms within this quantum dot. So they study um, the morphological properties of these materials. Then here um, on the right in the middle, you can see an image of two dimensional materials. We also call them van der Waals materials. These materials are atomically thin. So the thickness is really one uh, atom thick. And well, these new materials, so this is a complete new class of materials, and they, they exhibit very interesting new optical uh, properties. And these are being studied in this group. And then on the bottom right, um, you can see these nano antennas, which are composed of metals. And actually, again, by playing, playing with the dimensions, you can tune the interaction between the light and the material and you can enhance for instance the coupling of the light with the material and in this way you can for instance make a, a condensate of excitons so you can make a both Einstein condensation of excitons and this can even happen at room temperature and this could be a very well important ingredient for making a quantum simulator yeah, so on this slide you can see several examples of photonic integration but also links between uh, photonics and, and quantum. And then the last group that I will discuss in a bit more detail is PMP, Plasma Materials and Processing. Here we have Adriane Creatore, Archeet Bol, Richard Engelen, Adri Magis, and uh, Erwin Kessels. In this group, they are developing or studying uh, plasma processes. Uh, for instance, they make ultra cold plasmas. But they're also studying uh, deposition techniques where plasmas are used. Maybe the most um, important process is called atomic layer deposition. So in this group, they really master the deposition of, of layers um, also with one atom uh, thickness, one atomic thickness. Yeah, so in, in this uh, picture here in the middle, you can see a a stack of different materials. So every color represents a different material. And you can see how uniform and how well controlled they can deposit these materials. And in this way, they can also, uh, for instance, synthesize these, these uh, well, by definition, two dimensional materials, this whole new class of materials. And they also address new applications or applications like solar cells where the passivation, so the protection of the surface is, is very important. Um, so in Spectrum, we have the clean room, and this clean room is mainly used by these groups in this nano quantum photonics uh, track. So you can see a photo of this, well, of the inside of the clean room, where people wear these special suits in order to keep it clean inside. In this clean room, we can grow these materials uh, by these machines, but we can also make very advanced uh, devices. Yeah, and um, well, in this clean room, there are many PhD students, postdocs, but also most of our master students are also working in this clean room. And then also in Spectrum, we have our optical labs, for instance, where we can, well, uh, characterize these materials, but where we can also measure devices. And this can also be done as a function of temperature, so we can increase the temperature, but we can also um, go to extremely low temperatures, uh, to a few millikelvin, for instance. Yeah, so in this track, we have these groups um, um, available. Um, and uh, around these groups, you can see the possible uh, well, topics which are covered within these groups. So we have spintronics theory, integrated photonic devices, uh, soft matter, 2D materials, organic transport, 
uh, ultra-fast electron microscopy, quantum transport, Majorana physics, nanowire solar cells. And I must say that there are many interactions between these groups already. And on top of that, we have our, well, in normal situations, we have our monthly colloquium where we have speakers from, well, different groups in order to, well, stimulate discussions and stimulate interactions. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. So if you have more questions, please contact me. My email address is on the first slide. And, uh, well, I'm looking forward to host you in one of these groups. Thank you.